Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to introduce you to what's uh, currently going on at the Technical University in Brunswick in the research field of autonomous driving. So I'd like to invite you to show the project Stadtpilot with the goal of driving autonomously on Braunschweig's inner ring road. Uh, my name is Jörg Martin Wille. I'm a research associate at the Institute of Control Engineering, where Professor Markus Mauer is the head of. So that's the outline of my today's talk. I would like to start with a project introduction. I'd like to show you what's the project all about. Um, then I would like to discuss a little bit more in detail what's actually the difference between the urban challenge and the Stadtpilot. Um, with our experience in the urban challenge, I would like to show you what's, why is this uh, project, from our point of view, the next step. Then the test vehicle Leonie, it's the first one we have set up so far, and of course um, such a project has some research goals and I would like to show you uh, the main task of it. Finally, I think one of the most interesting things, what's the current state of the project, um, I have a little video presentation from our testing field, uh, it's still a project that is running, so it will take some time until you can see it on the road. So I'd like to start with our experience in the DARPA Urban Challenge and in our participation. And um, I think I don't have to discuss the routes in detail. I just want to remind it was 60 miles of urban traffic in less than six hours. And the vehicles had to do certain things on the way, like uh, recognizing uh, block roads, doing U-turns, merging into moving traffic, and many other things. Our final result was that we managed it uh, to build up a fully autonomous state-of-the-art vehicle in the less than 1.5 years, and we could uh, manage it also to the final as one of 11 teams. And based on that experience, we are now working on a yeah, more or less follow-up project, which is called Stadtpilot, with a goal that we transfer some of the knowledge we gained in this urban challenge um, to from this artificial, simplified urban environment now to a real urban environment of, the, of Braunschweig. It's obviously public traffic, and you can see here on the map, this is the inner part of Brunswick, and in red, uh, this red line marks the proposed track. It's a two-lane urban road with um, yeah, lots of intersections, there are traffic lights, the vehicle has to do lane, lots of lane change maneuvers, and the vehicle speed uh, range up to around 50, 60 kilometers per hour. Um, we have a team consisting of different partners, I will show you on the next slide. And um, the work is actually not uh, done in, in Braunschweig, it's done in Wolfsburg at the new automotive research center of Lower Saxony, uh, which is in German called NFF. And um, yeah, it's one of the first projects that is, um, uh, that is uh, be done in, uh, going to be done in this research center, and the goal is um, with this research center to combine all the research activities in this region um, in one uh, center. Um, project kickoff was summer 2008. That was the time where we first started to order vehicles. So, um, our first one, uh, we have actually two. It's Henry and Leonie. Leonie is done, I will show you today, and Henry is almost done as well. It's going to be a copy of Leonie. Yeah, this is a team that's working on the project. So we have three partners. That's first of all the Institute of Control Engineering. They're responsible for project management, environmental recognition, and vehicle guidance and control. Then we have the Institute of Flight Guidance. They are mainly in charge of positioning the vehicle on the ring road, which is already quite a challenge since you have lots of shadowing effects. And uh, as a pretty new partner, um, the German Aerospace Center, the Institute of Transportation Systems of Professor Lemma joins the team, and they provide the team with simulation tools and uh, later on in the project, um, pretty nice human machine interface. Yeah, and these are actually some scenes from the ring road taken. Um, as you can see, there are two lanes, as I said, already in, in both directions. They are partly separated, as you can see here. Once in a while, there are just lane markings that separate those lanes. Um, we have intersections with traffic lights, the additional turn lanes here, and we have different kind of road users. So whatever you have on, on an usual urban road, you can find on the ring road environment. Um, the overall track has 11 kilometers. Um, and the vehicle speed is usually up to 50, but you know Germans tend to drive a little bit faster, so we expect 60, 65 kilometers on average. Um, there are lots of things the vehicle has to do. Some are mentioned here, but there are more, of course, to come, like merging into moving traffic, intersection and so traffic lights. The vehicle has to do certain lane change maneuvers if, they, if it wants to do a, um, a, a turn maneuver. Yeah, now I would like to discuss a little bit more in detail actually what's new in this project. So it's, I guess, a really good question. What has been done in the Urban Challenge and what's now the focus of this project? And yeah, the main 
um, yeah, the main task is that it's not always just more difficult, and some things are just new, like the new basic conditions. In the Urban Challenge, we had a single event, and the goal was to win an award, so at, or at least um, to reach a top ranking. And now, uh, with the Stadtpilot project, we have a really long-term project, so it should last for, I don't know, a couple of years at least, and so that we gain somehow high research sustainability and that we can show from year to year what the, where the vehicle um, um, capabilities increased. We don't have like the stunt drivers in the urban challenge a controlled traffic anymore. We have now real traffic scenarios. That's the main issue that we um, transfer the knowledge we gained there now into a real urban environment. And it's obviously not a non, uh, non, not a non-public area anymore. So we need a street legal. And of course, it's not said by the DARPA anymore what the vehicle should to do. It's more or less the Vienna Convention on road traffic. So the infrastructure is becoming much more complex compared to the urban challenge. You can see this on this left picture where you're from the urban challenge where you have these wide roads, you have small houses, so perfect GPS reception. Now we have a densely populated area, as you can see on the right, with tall houses. We have trees hanging over the street, and um, yeah, the GPS reception is already a main issue. So we need certain different kind of modules that take care of the positioning of the vehicle. Instead of four-way stops, what was the main uh, intersection way in, in the urban chain, we have now, uh, most of the intersections have traffic lights. Um, we don't have blocked roads anymore. That was a special situation in the urban challenge that, re uh, that needed to be recognized and usually resulted in a U-turn and a dynamic replanning. Now we have other sophisticated situations like lane change maneuver that definitely needs to be done. For instance, if the vehicle is on the right lane and needs to do a um, a turn maneuver, a left turn maneuver on the next intersection, then we need to do a lane change, even though the, the traffic condition might uh, be very difficult at this point. Yeah, I would like to continue with the complex environment. Um, we don't have a controlled traffic anymore. You can see on the left picture an intersection that was contr by, uh, controlled by the DARPA. Uh, we have now real volume of traffic, as you can see on the right. It could also happen during one of the test runs. And we have a variety of different road users, as you can see here, not just vehicles and static obstacles anymore. Um, the stunt drivers of the urban challenge were known as behaving quite defensive. Uh, so now we have manifold driving styles. On the one hand, there's also the more defensive one, but also the more German aggressive ones, depends on what you ever meet on the ring road. So that's all we have to de deal with, and we don't know it exactly in advance. Um, a really special uh, situation in the Urban Challenge been, has been the final event where all robots were driving simultaneously, and I guess it even ended up in the first autonomous, uh, autonomous traffic jam I ever heard of. But what's the real main issue of it? It's the, the point is when robots were driving simultaneously, they are somehow programmed to breach once a while a rule if necessary. For instance, if a robot gets stuck at an intersection, the other robots try to find a way around somehow. And yeah, we don't expect any other autonomous vehicles on the ring road when we are driving, but this behavior of these robots, that's quite, um, yeah, quite common in, in urban traffic, that these tiny rule breaches happen every time, like just moving a little bit to the adjacent lane or forgetting a turn signal or braking very, very, um, with a very high acceleration. So the speed selection is also not self-dependent anymore. Um, like in the Urban Challenge, 30 miles per hour were allowed, but I think not many robots reached that speed very often. Our internal speed limit was even set to 20 miles per hour since the perception system, system wasn't uh, advanced enough. Um, now we have a vehicle speed that is based on traffic conditions, so we don't want to slow down the traffic flow, so we have to behave like um, the urban traffic. Yeah, and finally, the vehicle requirements increased as well. So here two pictures from the Urban Challenge, like this vehicle doesn't even have a seat anymore. Also, our special mounted LiDAR system here is not really common in, in German public traffic. So that's not allowed anymore. We have to fulfill certain requirements and the road traffic regulations constrain the modifications. Um, but on the other hand, we don't need a remote control emergency stop anymore. A stop anymore. Of course, we will have a surveillance driver that can take control uh, over the vehicle if necessary. It's a research project and you don't want to be risky, right? Yeah, and that's actually our first vehicle. It's called Leonie. Um, 
It's first of all a uh, usual Passat uh, VW Passat station wagon with a two liter engine. That's nothing special. We um, extended a second generator in the cooperation with VW. It's one lesson learned uh, out of the urban challenge where we ended up in the final that we couldn't run all systems at the same time since we just had a lack of power. So we don't want to have this problem again. Um, the sensor setup is mainly based on the Urban Challenge vehicle. Uh, we extended it by this Velodyne, um, which is already quite, uh, well known from the Urban Challenge event as well, but uh, this time we can afford one as well. Um, we have different modules that take care of the localization, like an uh, inertia measurement unit, these laser scanners to detect lane markings. We have a pretty well um, good digital map. And we are using commercial software products, so it's not the goal of such a project to um, develop an own middleware. Yeah, and the most important thing of such a project is not a big show. It's more that we uh, would like to fulfill certain um, scientific objectives. So I'd like just to mention a couple of them, which are the most important ones for us. So this is first of all the environmental perception, where we on the one hand have grid-based and object-based uh, models of the environment, and we also uh, um, working on evaluation tools that we can, yeah, figure out how, what, why, uh, where did they really increase compared to a previous version. Then we have a localization fusion. I already mentioned several times, um, and of course, the vehicle guidance is a big topic. Like on the one hand, we need rule-based approaches based approaches that are really deterministic and um, on the other hand also kind of behavior based approaches where we can handle situations we haven't foreseen but the main goal is that it needs to be deterministic that can't go anything wrong there and so one topic is how can I switch between appro both approaches and combine the advantages of both um, we have a new trajectory planning that generates curvature optimized trajectories over the whole roadway um, half, of, half of the paper written for this conference is about this trajectory planning, so um, if you're interested, um, it's written in the paper. And of course, we need a safety concept. Um, we have a surveillance driver inside the vehicle, but he needs to be informed. He needs to be, um, we need the monitoring that the surveillance driver always knows what the main, um, uh, where the system is currently, in which states the system is currently in. Yeah, and now I'm coming to the, I guess, most important question, what's the current state of the project? And yeah, this is a top view of our testing field right now. This is the main part where we're testing uh, uh, recently. And uh, yeah, in a really simplified uh, view, you can see um, such a vehicle in three tasks. So first of all, you need a decision basis where you, it's mainly perception and a priori knowledge like a digital map. Then you have something a decision called decision finding that makes something out of this information and uh, says what the vehicle should to do next. And finally, you need lots of modules that realize those decisions. So the sensor setup and the perception is uh, now done in the first version and allow the first uh, maneuvers, driving maneuvers. Also, the, um, the decision realization is more or less done. We can now realize almost any kind of decisions so far. So we have this trajectory planning, low level controlled by wire system. And in this uh, decision finding, the behavior in the traffic flow is already working and is now under testing on the testing grounds. That means lane keeping, vehicle following, emergency stop, behavior traffic lights, or what happens if sun, sun, uh, suddenly something moves into your own lane and how do you behave in this matter. Um, Lane change maneuvers are currently under development, working on that, and it's hopefully an under testing soon as well. So on the next slide, ah, okay, there's one, however, one main issue that it's still not solved, and that is gaining the approval to drive autonomously is still a major challenge. I never expected it uh, actually to be that complicated, but uh, we have promised to get one soon, but I am promised it already since a while, so I'm pretty sure we get one soon, but um, there are, the technical board or the, um, is still having some additional um, yeah, um, requirements that we have to fulfill, but it's hopefully getting soon as well. Yeah, now I have a small video demonstration from our testing ground uh, with four scenes. Um, we were testing there, for instance, here staying in lane, adapting speed to traffic flow, one of the basic behavior. It might look like a little bit like a, um, a vehicle race, but it's actually really autonomous driving. So these three vehicles here are uh, traffic vehicles, and that's Leonie, and of course there are two 
to uh, people in the vehicle, but they're not doing anything, even you might not see it here. Um, so that is just approaching an intersection here, and we arranged a couple of different obstacles to narrow the road and um, yeah, to have a similar, um, similar environment like on the ring road. Now it's really typical situation like that uh, merging into Leonie's lane. First of all, we have a vehicle in front of Leonie. They are, the whole uh, flow is driving like 35 kilometers per hour. And now this uh, vehicle moves out and Leonie can just accelerate to its internal speed um, uh, from the decision unit. And finally, the vehicle goes back and um, makes a really hard stop in front of this intersection. So we have around four to five meters per square second and it's uh, doing it really well here. So what we mainly were testing here a couple of weeks ago was that the safe uh, that we have a safe uh, stop and go behavior, and yeah, typical situations we uh, we monitored on the ring road. So in the next scene, um, we tested uh, what happens if something moves suddenly into her own lane, like a static obstacle that uh, comes from the side, um, and how it avoids a collision. So Leonie is now approaching this intersection again. Here are some um, cars waiting on the left side, and suddenly something moves here into the lane. It can be seen from outside a little bit better. Um, and it does a safe stop, and at least here you can see that nothing is done by the, uh, by the uh, yeah, I couldn't call him a driver, so by the person sitting in the car. Um, this is also a really common situation. Here's another car waiting in the left lane, and yeah, he seems he got a little bit annoyed, so he changed the the um, changed the lane. And as you can see, there wasn't that much space, and so Lenny could recognize it and manage it quite okay here. So yeah, as I said, it's mainly stop and go behavior that we tried in different variations here. Um, lane changes are hopefully coming soon. Um, and yeah, I'm now done with my presentation. If there are any questions now, I would be happy to answer them now or, of course, later in the conference, but I guess not during the German soccer game.